Okay, so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through the events section of Access Planet. Um, we haven't really used this much, um, but it's really important that you guys know, and it's mainly used as an audit log. So I know there's been some instances where you know something's changed in a course, uh, maybe a resource was deleted, and we haven't been able to figure out maybe where that error came from, um, just to see maybe what we need to learn a little bit more of the system, um, when that change took place, what might have happened. And um, so you can see, I'm just on the 14th of April right now, if you were to right click on this course, let's say something happened on this course and something was deleted or all of a sudden, you know, like the venue's missing or there's no trainer attached to it, but we know that there was a trainer associated with this course. And um, if you go into audit log, and you'll see this in different aspects of the system. You'll see it under like candidate names and things like that as well. It primarily tells you anytime something's changed in the course, but it's not very specific though. So you can see in the event labels, and if you guys can't see, see this, just use this as any other data grid um, when you can amend it by here to see. Um, any of the columns that are associated with this and then they'll always show in the table So I always have an event label event description definitely user ID so I can see who made the change and what happened um, so you can see on this one um, There's the new course date. This is the date that the new course was booked This is really important because that shows you if there was any error with this booking You'll know when it was made. I typically always use this is if let's say we went to a course uh, or the client received the um, update reminder, it's how we track when the course booking take, took place. Essentially, it's this date that's gonna show here is what you're gonna find in your email trail when it's associated with that client to see when that booking comms actually got brought through um, or maybe why it went wrong in the first place. So this is your audit trail for this. If you notice, it's showing you all these course date updated, but it's showing you that these records were changed, and this gives you details of it. So the start date changed from 8 o'clock a.m. Um, to 9 o'clock a.m. on the same date, though, so it's likely to happen when the course was put in in the first place. So you can see that it was within two minutes, so the timing just went in wrong, and it was fixed. Um, you can see that it went from provisional to fully booked because it's a candy course and it's happening at our venue. So you can see these kinds of changes. What you can't see is anything that was attached to a resource. So if I go into the details section, I can see that um, Pauline's associated with this course, but my audit log didn't tell me when Pauline was actually added to this course. So it's details like that, that this is not gonna show you. If we ever need to see details, and this is good, that's one example is the resource obviously, but it'll, you're gonna be searching for the same details regardless of what event that you're looking took place. Uh, um, and when the system uses the word events, uh, all it means is some kind of change or amendment has happened in the course. Uh, so any event in the system is a change in the system. So if we wanna see something attached to this course, cause we know it was something to do with this Adobe basic life support course that's happening in the office um, on the 14th, we're gonna go into attributes. And if you see every single course that's put into the system, it's got an ID associated with it. Now this ID is gonna change it on every single course. So you'll notice that if I went into this other course, it's gonna have a different ID that's attached to it. So we're gonna go back to the um, adult basic life support course eh, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this attribute. So what I'm looking to do right now is I found the ID number associated with this particular course and I wanna see what changes have been made to this specific course. Eh. Um, so if we close this, we're gonna go up here to events on the top right hand corner and we're gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna go to see all events. So now what this is showing you is every single change that's been made in the system. So you, once again, probably might not see all of the columns that I can see here. So amend your screen, because what you definitely want to see is your event label, the date, the description, the user ID, and the detail. Now, we don't normally use this very often, but when we do use it, the more details that you can see, 
you can kind of review just so you get an idea of how things are labeled so that you can figure out how you can find what it is that you're looking for. So this one's going to be a little bit easy because right away I can see that my course date ID, which is what we just copied from the system, it shows exactly like this. So what this event is showing me is that I did. This is my user ID. So on the 11th of April at 1.40, I deleted a course. So if I had to use this once because I accidentally deleted the course and I had no idea how to figure out what course I actually just deleted, obviously that's a major um, <laughs> error that can be made. So you can figure it out from here of what that actually was. So we're going to try and figure out any changes that were made to that adult basic life support course. So I'm going to go to create new. And I'm going to use a filter like we always do in a lot of the data grids. Um, I'm going to use... I'm going to say the detail because what I'm going to do is clear up what this column is going to show me. And I'm going to say contains because I have my course date ID. So I want to see any single um, change that was made associated with this number. Now, bear in mind, there's IDs associated with everything. So you can see here that course ID the course date ID, sorry, it's associated with this number. You might have the same number associated with a resource requirement though. So let's see what comes up when we go into preview. And what it's doing right now is it might take a bit of time, but it's gonna show you everything that's come through. Um, so you can see course date ID, it's associated with quite a few things. Um, a resource was removed from this course date, you can see this. I'm going to go and take a look to see what that means further. So I'm going to go into preview. It doesn't really give me much information here. It just says a resource was removed from the course date, but I can't see what resource that was. If you go down a little bit more, you can see that this one, a resource requirement was deleted. So we deleted an actual requirement. Um, what you're gonna need to do though is figure out what that requirement was. So this looks like it was a resource type ID, which says in-house 29. So that means because it's associated with ATE, training venue. Now, if a user course date was deleted, this means that we assigned it to somebody else. And it looks like just based on the user ID, you can figure out what instructor that would have been. So it's details like that, that you just kind of need to be a little bit mindful of. Um, it's a little bit of investigative um, research that you want to do. If a new user course day was put in, it's associated with um, with a user in the system. So what we could do is go into here and I'm gonna see, maybe Pauline wasn't the instructor who was supposed to be on that course. Maybe somebody removed somebody and all of a sudden, it's like the 13th of April, roster's gone out and this person's wondering why they aren't on that course anymore. So we're gonna go and see who this user is associated with. So we're gonna go into users, into this section here and I'm going to try and see. I don't have user IDs on my title right now. I've got them here, sorry. So we're going to go into more filters and we're going to say create new. And I'm going to say user ID contains because I've got my specific address and I'm going to say preview. So from this, you can see that that user ID is Pauline. So that's when Pauline was added to the course. If we scroll down to see every single event that took place, you'd probably be able to, you'll figure out who the previous instructor was because Pauline was added at short notice. You can tell from the dates of the course and somebody was taken off. Um, so you could easily just keep scrolling through just to see who that user was before. So I'm gonna go back into my event section and I'm gonna go back into, I need to find my attribute again, because I did not have that written down. I go into this one, and we'll jump straight to attributes. Let's do a quick search again. Ooh, way too far. Okay, so we're back at the events page now, and we're gonna go detail. 
And we're just gonna scroll a little bit further down. So this one was the one that was associated with Pauline. So we're gonna go through. You can see originally that this user ID was used. And that's fairly simple to see who that might have been. <laughs> so if we removed an instructor, that's where you can see it. We can use the exact same thing just by seeing um, resource removed. So we've used this on several occasions when it comes to that requirement. You know how we need to see that a resource is needed? This is how you can see why it's taken off. It's typically used because a resource was removed from a date, but they were just with that X as opposed to doing it from the resource bit. So, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's if we were in a course. So if we had to change instructions, we instructor, sorry, and we just X this person out, we still need an instructor for this course. What that's not gonna do though is reflect here. So if that ever happened, that's how you would be able to figure out. Because I would see, oh, what's my attribute? And let me go do a filter in my events page. So just keep bearing in mind where your attributes are and what's going on. So they'll be in your resources. They'll be in um, each resource as well. They've each got their own IDs uh, that you'd be able to see. We're just going to right click on this one and check attributes. So always look at your attributes and there's always going to be something associated there that you can then do a further dig into.